Hello, this presentation is another exciting Grow Your Own opportunity centered around the military veterans. This is being presented by the Michigan Department of Education and the Office of Educator Excellence. My name is Dante Watson, and I am the manager of the Recruitment and Retention Unit within the Office of Educator Excellence. The primary work of this unit is to recruit and retain educators in the state of Michigan. Today, I will share the purpose of this grant. You will learn who can apply for the grant, which military veteran candidates qualify for the grant, how eligible applicants can use the funds for the qualified military veterans. I will also share the grant timeline and the application process that the applicants will use. At the end of this presentation, you will find a QR code and my email address. Please use the QR code to submit your questions. This will help our team compile a, a FAQ for you all that will be posted on the Military Veteran Grant website. Michigan Department of Education goal is to increase the quality, quantity, and diversity of our teaching force in Michigan. The state of Michigan has allocated $15 million towards its Military Veterans Grant. This grant supports the guiding principles of Michigan's top 10 strategic education plan to ensure that all students have access to a high quality instruction um, delivered by educators who have the resources, support, and training needed to educate students. It is specifically intended to accomplish this by addressing goal seven um, of this plan to increase the numbers of certified teachers in the area of shortage. The grant incentivizes school districts and educator prep providers to collaborate on preparation experiences for qualified veterans seeking teacher certification. Eligible applicants. Applicants that are eligible to apply for this grant are Michigan-based local education agencies and public school academies. This program provides a method for districts to offer paid mentorship and salary for military veterans seeking educator certifications. Veterans interested in becoming certified may not apply directly. They have to go, they have to connect with a district. The district has to apply on their behalf. Okay, now we're going to get into the meat of the presentation that discusses candidate criteria. Uh, candidates that qualify for this program must meet the following criteria. The individual must be a veteran, and a veteran is described as or is defined as um, an individual who served in the United States Armed Forces, including the reserve components and was discharged or released under conditions other than dishonorable. This opportunity is not for individuals who do not have a bachelor's degree. The veteran must have been awarded a bachelor's degree from a public or private university. If the military veteran does not meet this criteria, they are welcome to visit or you can direct them to the Michigan Department of Education uh, website uh, to check out other opportunities for which they may be eligible for. And if you take a look down below here, you will see the QR code on the page on this page that will take you directly to the link to other financial support options that are available to them. The veteran must be enrolled in student teaching at a Michigan approved educator prep provider. You can also find a link uh, to all of the approved 
educational prep providers on the military veteran grant webpage. Districts interested in this opportunity must pledge to use the grant for only the reasons described in the Troops to Teachers Initiative. And that is also, I'm always going to direct you back to the webpage. That is also on the webpage, the Military Veterans Grant webpage. Districts interested in um, interested will hire support staff to implement this Military Veterans Grant Initiative. They will implement a mentorship training program that includes at a minimum phase one and two mentorship training that will be provided to the military veteran. Phase one and phase two of mentorship training must meet the following criteria. It must be for a duration of one semester. The military veteran must serve as a student teacher at a school operated by the district while shadowing a mentor teacher for the duration of their training. Also, to the extent possible, the military veteran must be paired with a mentor teacher who teaches uh, in a relevant subject or grade level. The mentor teacher has to be a certified teacher who has served um, as a certified teacher for five or more school years. After the qualified military veteran has completed one semester of student teaching, the mentor teacher uh, that they were paired with uh, shall either approve or disapprove of the military veteran's completion of their phase one mentorship training. And then they can recommend or not recommend their deployment into teaching into classrooms and certification. If the mentor disapproves and doesn't recommend deployment of teaching into the classroom and certification, the military veteran will not be considered to have completed phase one mentorship training. However, this is an opportunity to help them grow because they will have the opportunity to go through a phase two of the program, which mirrors the same the uh, phase one. Uh, so they will repeat the the mentorship um, training program for another semester uh, in order to seek approval and deployment into the teaching profession. OK, and like I said, phase two follows the same criteria. OK. Student teaching salary. Um, districts must pledge to pay a salary for their military veteran for completing one semester of student teaching as part one or two uh, of the mentorship training. This is whether or not the military veteran is approved for completion of phase one or two of mentorship training. This salary amount must equal the starting salary of a first year teacher in that district. This does not limit uh, if in compliance with other laws uh, that the district, uh, the district from providing additional compensation to the qualified military veteran. So they can provide additional compensation to the military veteran if they so choose. After completion of the mentorship training, the district must pledge to pay the costs and fees associated with completion of each subject area examination uh, for each subject in which the military veteran uh, is looking to uh, be certified in. So that includes MTTC training uh, or testing fees. This grant may also provide salary support until September 30th, 2027 for military veterans who become employed as teachers after their mentorship training. In the next few slides, I will share uh, the, the stipulations required for this support. Okay, one second here. 
Okay. When the district is able to employ the qualified military veteran as a teacher, this is after the successful completion of their phase one or two mentorship program, uh, as I described in the previous slides, and uh, after obtaining their teacher certification. The district must adhere to the following rules in order to utilize the grant funds to support the military veterans starting teacher, starting first year teacher salary. First, the district must pledge to pay the military veteran a salary that equals at least the, the minimum district's starting first year salary for a first year teacher. If the salary of the military veteran was lower in the military than the starting first year teacher salary, the district will be responsible for fully paying the military veteran um, the starting first year teacher salary without grant funding support. However, if the military veterans pay was higher than the starting teacher salary in the district, then the grant funds can be used to cover the sum of the starting teacher salary in the district and 50% of the difference between the highest salary uh, the military veteran received in the military and the sum of the first year starting teacher salary in the district. And as you can see, I have placed the formula down here um, below for you to be able to calculate the difference that the grant can support. On the next slide, I will go deeper into an example and a scenario of what um, the district will be responsible for and what the grant can support. So here's an example of the district salary responsibility and the difference that the grant could be used to support. If the district's starting teacher salary is 40,000, we'll call that X, and the military veteran's highest yearly salary received in the military was 60,000, we'll call that Y, then the grant would be used to cover 50% of the difference between the two salaries. That is $10,000, not the full salary. Districts must account for any teacher salary incre increases to make sure that they are uh, following these guidelines as well. So, for example, here again, this is the military veterans salary, highest salary when they were in the military, and this is a first year starting teacher salary, 40,000. So you subtract that, that's 20,000, uh, 50% would be, 50% uh, of that would be 10,000. So that would be the, diff the difference that the grant can support. So the military will, I mean, the pledged salary to the military veteran for that year would be $50,000 total um, uh, 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 for that. Okay. So we would support the um, $10,000 of the $50,000 salary. OK, uh, however, it's also important to mention that uh, the amount described must not exceed the highest teacher salary in the district. It would have to mirror that. As part of the application, the military veteran, veteran who qualifies for uh, this portion of the grant funding, uh, the districts must describe how they will gradually phase down grant funding by September 30th, 2027. So take a look at this scenario. This is an example of a phase down plan that uh, supports a military veteran sal salary after being hired in a district. Um, so uh, let's see here. The first light blue line does not require any attention other than just a district's commitment to pay starting teacher salary, first year starting teacher salary to a military veteran for the completion of their first year of their first semester of student teaching. So that's what that uh, indicates right there. Okay. The next white line 
starts with 2024 through 2025, and that is the military veterans first year of teaching and what the district is responsible for paying and what the grant can support. Uh, of the pledged salary of $50,000. Yeah, so they're not getting $60,000, they're getting $50,000 and will support $10,000 uh, within that, okay? Uh, the district would cover, you know, 40,000 uh, 40, of that. So going down to the next line, as you can see, the grant contribution section, it decreases uh, to uh, 5,000 during the 2025 through 2026 school year. And then the final year, it decreases again to 2,500, okay? Now, it is also important to Note that districts must pay for 100% of the military veteran's salary without grant support by September 30th, 2027. So keep that in mind. The districts must also pledge to continue to pay the military veteran in a manner um, as described without further funding by September 30th, 2027. Okay. Okay, the grant timeline. Applicants can be, uh, uh, applications can be submitted until July 31st, 2024, or until funds run out, whichever comes first. Uh, applications must be submitted using the Jim's Mars system no later than July 30th, 2024 for review. Again, the districts must plan to phase down the usage of funds allotted under this grant by September 30th, 2027. Please note that since no state aid payments will go out in September, districts um, uh, receiving funds have to ensure that they are not spending any grant funds past this date. Just as an FYI, Jim's Mars is, an, um, is a grant monitoring process. An end system, and it is web based and a paperless process. Uh, the features include providing a secure web based system that requires no additional software, and it allows us to inform applicants uh, of required documentation and uh, communicate uh, with them via that system. Military veteran applications will be reviewed and approved on a rolling basis until the closing of the application. So we'll continue to review them as they come in until funds are used up or until the due date of uh, July or until um, July 30th, 2024. Okay. All right, so as I said at the beginning, we are looking to compile questions into a FAQ. If you have any questions, please use the QR code displayed on this page to submit them uh, to me. The QR code will take you to a survey where you can post all of your questions. I will post this, uh, um, the survey, uh, the questions that you add, that you add into a, uh, I'll create a, a FAQ from the questions that you have added um, to that survey uh, on the Military Veterans Grant webpage. But please know that you have the option also to indicate if you want me to respond to you via email uh, so you're not waiting on the FAQ to come out. So that's an option as well. So don't think that just because you have to submit uh, it through this, this survey that you have to wait on a response that may take longer. If you click a, uh, uh, indicate that you, that you would like an email, um, I will definitely 
respond to your question as well as decide if it needs to be within the FAQ. So this survey will be available through 12-29-2023. So please, like I said, make sure that you uh, use the survey to add any questions that you may have. And after that, please direct all questions to me. All right, so we have come to the end of the presentation. Thank you so much for viewing it. And please follow us on social media, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. This is the conclusion of the presentation. And thank you so much for your time.